Now, let's talk about how you're deciding what of everything that is currently stocking your personal boutique, what pieces are you going to retain? Well, I like to think in terms of what are the pieces that are going to be the most valuable in a wardrobe. And that means first and foremost pieces that are solid colors. I don't mean to suggest at all that you would never want to wear something print or patterned or with a design to it, but you'll have far, far, far more versatility um, from your solid pieces. Now, all of us, each of us, has her own unique personal style, and some people are more um, bohemian or ethnic or um, flamboyant and really love their prints and patterned pieces. And remember, I'm not saying not to have them, not to wear them, not to love them, but think of them as the frosting on a cupcake. Frosting is wonderful. <laughs> truly one of my personal favorite things. Um, but it's very difficult to have very much frosting without a cupcake under it to give it support and balance. That's what solid color pieces are going to do in your wardrobe. So think about overvaluing, if you will, um, those solids as you're deciding what to put back. Next, you want to place a priority on hanging on to pieces that are classic styling. That means reasonably sleek, unembellished, without any extreme kinds of, of details, oversized collars, oversized buttons, busy print mixes, whatever, um, things that will go on season after season. I sometimes think of it as things that are never so in that they have the opportunity to be out next time. You also want to put a greater value, point value, if you will, for deciding what to keep on top garments than bottom garments. In general, we want to dress in a way that calls the most attention up here close around our face, on our upper bodies, and stay more neutral and basic from the waist down. So you need fewer of those pieces since they're less eye-catching, less memorable. This is a shot of my own closet. I added this with some trepidation. Um, I, what I want you to notice is that my bottom garments, which are hanging on that top row, are spaced way further apart. There's far fewer of them um, than of my tops that you'll see on the bottom row. So first a disclaimer that I readily admit that that is way more clothing than any one human being would ever need on this planet. My justification is that I use all of them constantly in lessons, videos, now webinars, um, style shots for my blog and whatever. So they're my work product as well as just my clothing. Um, I had another, oh, the other thing to say about that is it may seem sort of counterintuitive to you to hang my bottom garments on top and my top garments on the bottom. And in fact, I did it the other way, that logical seeming tops on top, bottoms on the bottom arrangement myself for years. And then a friend who's the closet organizer, not in the sense of the contents, but in the sense of, of the storage um, versatility, pointed out to me that our bottom garments don't stick out as far from the back wall as our tops do where you have the shoulder line to, to consider. So because most of our closets have overhead lighting, by hanging my tops on top, I was leaving all my bottoms shadowed and having a heck of a time telling my black pants from my navy pants or whatever, I've reversed it and have never looked back for a second. So if you have a double hung area in your closet, think about the possibility of, um, of reversing the way those things. 
And then you want to be really careful about items that are incredibly trendy. This particular slide is showing you that open shoulder look and then the big blousy full decorative um, embellished sleeves, both of which were huge trends just about this time last year. And you see how quickly they become dated. They're really stuck in 2019 where we'd rather have things that go on and on and on in our wardrobes. Now one, one time that it does pay to spend your money and, and get some wear out of a trend is when a trend really is a look that just makes your heart flutter. I personally have a real thing about tweed garments finished with fringed detail. Um, and when they're in, I buy them. When they're not particularly in, I sew them for myself. But when they have a phase that they're really in and really hot, I put them away the next year. So it doesn't look like I'm wearing last year's trend and just don't know it's over. And then by the following year, everybody's sort of lost sight of what a big deal they were two years ago. And then I can pull them out and they go right back to functioning as classics in my wardrobe. Now, when most women think about what they want to have in their wardrobe, how they want to look in their clothes, the first thing they check when they try something on in the store, for most women, I find they're worried about what's going on from the neck down. Um, sort of that classic, does this make my butt look fat mentality. The truth of the matter is we all have different body types, different shapes, whatever. And the clearest, the biggest mistakes that I see women make are the mistakes they make when they're trying to hide whatever it is that they think is wrong with their body. The answer to that is simply to put those concerns on the back burner, not fit concerns, but what style are you going to choose and make the obsession with negative thoughts about our bodies take a real back seat to the joy of how wonderful we look when we focus instead on colors that really showcase us. Because when we do that, a couple of interesting things happen. Number one, people are so positively impressed by how glowing and healthy we look. Their focus goes right to our face and they look right past or never notice the things that we think are such challenges about our bodies. And that creates a balance, a continuous flow of color from the top of our um, heads to the bottom of our feet, which instantly makes us look taller and instantly makes us look sleeker. It's so counterintuitive, sort of like hanging your bottoms on top but trust me, it makes all the difference. Now, I already alluded to the fact that we all have so many black pants. And why? Because we're told that that's the thing that is slenderizing, sophisticated, versatile, everything we want in a wardrobe. The truth of the matter is, it's not the only option. By far the better neutral, what I call a key neutral option for every woman is a color that relates somehow closely to the color of her hair. Can you see how all five of these women, your attention just goes immediately to their faces because they're wearing a neutral that relates to the color of their hair. Doesn't have to necessarily match, doesn't mean that you're limited to that one overall color. You might do lighter and darker variations. But let's look at those same women with black superimposed. Do you see how you don't see any visual connection at all between those women and black? And that's exactly what would happen if they wear that color as well. It's expected, nobody's going to say to them, oh my gosh, what were you thinking? But you're not going to get the same glow that you get when you're wearing a neutral that relates to your hair color. So as you're shopping on your utique, 
look to see what neutral pieces you might have that are in colors that relate closely to your hair because it really is a magic formula. Now, as we're applying the color advice that we're moving into here, color is the first filter, but it's not the only one. Once you've decided that something is a potential keeper, slip it on and ask yourself, does it fit me, for example? And realize that fit means way more than just, I was able to zip it. Um, mm -hmm. If something is too snug, it immediately piles on visual pounds. If it's an unflattering length, um, that might be something that we want to look at altering. And by the way, if in this process you come across things that need a minor repair or alteration, go ahead and hang them back in your closet for now, but mark that hanger in some way. Maybe tie a little bow on it, or um, maybe you have some of those twist ties in a secret drawer in your kitchen that you can use to mark those garments to come back to later to take care of those little repairs. Um, you want to ask yourself if it's comfortable, no matter how cute it looks, if you're going to be pulling on it and tugging on it every time you wear it, um, that's not going to be something that you're going to enjoy wearing. I'm pretty sure it was Gilda Radner who famously said that um, she based all her wardrobe choices on what didn't itch. And last but not least, is it flattering to you in your own opinion when you look in the mirror do you see yourself, not the garment, and do you see the total picture looking the way you want other people to see you and think about you? Now, as you're trying things on, it's almost unbelievable the difference that a couple of little hidden accessories can make in the flattery of basic pieces in your wardrobe. This is a comparison um, that one of my clients, Kathleen, sent me. Kathleen sews many of her own outfits and she had made this cascade jacket literally just to try out the pattern. She never intended to have it be part of her wardrobe at all. But since she had been to one of my workshops shortly before that, after she put it on, she inserted a little shoulder support, a little shoulder shaper. I'm not going to call them shoulder pads, only because I know that you've heard for the last 10 years at least that they're the death knell of style. Not true one bit, as you can see here. Um, and then she pushed up her sleeves and held those in place with stretchable sleeve bands. And can you see how much more flattering and gracefully even that sort of accidental garment falls when she's made those two little accessory changes. So don't determine if something is a keeper until, or isn't a keeper, until you've given it a fair chance um, with shoulder support and pushed up sleeves, really magic formulas. Here are several more examples. If you look at the two ladies on the left, each of them has a little removable foam shoulder pad tucked into the shoulder on the left. And do you see how that shoulder pad is pushing the attention right up to their face where without it, and you see this especially in the woman on the left, your attention just sort of slides down her shoulder, down her arm and away from her face completely especially a valuable trick if you're spending a lot of your time on Zoom meetings and webinars and you really want, especially want people to have a favorable focus up high on your total appearance. Um, the shoulder shapers are not something that you sew into a garment. They are made from a texturized foam that you simply lay in place between your shoulder and the garment and the texture causes it to cling to the fabric and just stay in place perfectly for you um, all day long. I have them in right now. In fact, can you see if I slip those off, do you see how it looks like somebody just let the air out of the tires on the right side of my look? So now I'm gonna tuck that right back in and I feel like my presence is back. And those items are available on our website and um, we have them custom made for us to have that texture to stay in place. 
um, and they're available individually and as a set. Now, bouncing back to color decisions, we already talked about white shirts not being really the only option for those lighter upper body garments. Off-white, creamy is certainly another wonderful choice. Um, you may not want to get too yellow a cream unless you have warm golden kind of coloring, but a pearl or a winter white is wonderful but a magic secondary neutral um, that most people don't think of is this blush color repeating or relating really closely to your skin tone. Now, this is not a color that you want to wear hair to, head to toe. And it's probably not a color that you want to choose for skirts or pants because it can readily create the impression that you're not wearing anything. But as an underlayer or an overlayer top popped against a slightly stronger neutral, possibly your hair color, it has a beautiful way of really softening your look. And for women of color, they obviously that blushy, peachy, in between pink and peach um, is not their skin color, but they can accomplish the same thing um, by choosing a sandy, softer um, neutral that does indeed approach the color tone of their skin. Repeating colors that are part of you just can't help but be um, flattering because it's already part of your natural makeup. Another neat trick, and again, this is especially um, Im impactful when you're in close-up communication situations, which might be those Zoom meetings, it might be meeting someone new when we're socializing again, job interviews, asking for a raise, romantic dinners. Um, in any of those situations, as well as just life in general, it's incredibly effective to wear pieces on your upper body that repeat or relate closely to your eye color. I had such a funny experience with that personally as we were um, getting the oil changed in my car, excellent timing right before the pandemic. I was dropping off the car and the young man who was checking me in stopped filling out the paperwork and said to me, oh my gosh, you have the most gorgeous eyes. Now, this kid, this young man, I shouldn't say kid, was easily 40 years my junior, um, so he wasn't hitting on me. He probably cared about as much about women's clothing as I care about oil changes, but the impact of the sweater that I had on that day, which was a gray dusty blue, was really that significant um, that it caught even his attention and that can certainly do the same thing for you. Now, if you have dark brown eyes and dark brown hair, lucky you, your built-in appearance is giving you that impact every day of the world, um, but you can certainly continue to emphasize it in the clothing that you choose. A way that people make mistakes around this idea of wearing your eye color is to think that as long as you're in the same color family, the brighter the better. But do you see how when we surround this same woman's eyes with this really deep electric royal blue, all of a sudden her eye color doesn't look nearly as compelling as we did when it was surrounded by something that was more like the color actually is. Now that doesn't mean there's anything wrong necessarily with wearing royal blue. It just isn't the same impact as repeating your eye color. And the same thing goes for any other super bright version of a potential eye color. Okay. Now another sneaky trick that really is not very widely taught to people at all is that this color family from turquoise blue and aqua into teal and jade green is the most flattering color family universally across all patterns of women's coloring. Now each of us has our own narrow best range within that broad color family, 
but it's so good that even our secondary or third level version of that color family is still likely to be extremely flattering and therefore whatever pieces you have in your wardrobe that are in that color range are things that you want to take a really good hard look at keeping. Now, it's interesting to know that this isn't just my opinion. There's a reason why this color family is so impactful. And that is because it's the complement or the color wheel opposite of human skin tones. Whether our skin tones are lighter or darker, you can see on the screen that that, that skin tone range when you follow the white arrow right across takes us directly into that teal turquoise jade green area so a, a really great spot to build up your wardrobe